But okay, yeah, it, before I start my presentation, I would like to so thank Jonas very much because Jonas gave a so good introduction for my presentation that I don't need to give any numbers now that, that my life is much simpler now. Okay, I will focusing on the distribution of the ferrum manganese concretion uh, in the Estonian seafloor and it's true that we don't have any clear border between uh, Finland and Estonia, of course, is concretion uh, also distributing on Estonian waters. Uh, there was a question in morning session at uh, uh, how we can uh, investigate uh, Estonian basement without uh, drilling and uh, with geophysics. Of course, I know the answer. It's a very simple answer. We don't just need something more like like uh, snorkel we need of course uh, diving suit we need uh, diving instruments and then go down to seabed and just hammering uh, our uh, crystalline basement that's uh, in the Gulf of Finland for example okay I server I I starting from geology at exactly the Gulf of Finland is very important site because it's located between the Venuscandian sea and Eastern European platform, and I not absolutely agree with Kallet, who say that Estonians we are Paleozoic people. That I feel that I am also uh, older than Paleozoic. That I am Proterozoic, maybe people. That because if you go maybe some uh, ten kilometers out to see to sailing, we are already here on the crystalline basement because yes, the crystalline basement is uh, cropping out very large areas of the Estonian uh, waters in the Gulf of Finland area. Okay, yeah, this is for example the seabed relief map and we are clearly see it where we have a crystalline basement rock on the northern part of Gulf of Finland and we have a sedi where a sedimentary palaisoic cover and, and we are very nicely see it. We have a three type of escarpments here we have Ordovician, Portly Clint, then we have Silurian Clint and Devonian Clint. Okay, but my talk will be focused mainly uh, uh, with Gulf of Finland because, of course, we have more data for this area. And there are some figures on the right uh, compiled by Ivo Lepland put together the information we have with so called oxic and also anoxic facies of the precipitation of manganese concretion and and we see at Estonia's we have large areas where the distribution of concretion is taking place is Gulf of Finland and also on the bay in R Riga Bay. Okay. But if you look, for example, the Emotnet uh, geology portal, where the marine geological data is connected around the Europe, we see like the black, oh, sorry, the black, black dots, yeah. Okay, again, I, okay. These black dots, it's meaning that we have a polymetallic nodules here, and we see that they are mostly connected with a eastern part of Gulf of Finland and we don't have have uh, any occurs in the Gulf of Riga but but if you now looking how a data set we see it we have much more data what we mapped in the Gulf of Finland than in the Gulf of Riga and I think this is the main reason but we have uh, <laughs> more common areas in Gulf of Finland for ferromanganese concretions. Okay and uh, the, uh, the Gulf of Finland area mostly mapped by geologically during 80s, 90s. We have a quite good coverage of the seismoacoustic lines, profilings, and also with, uh, with samples because in, in this time, uh, they used very long core, as you see. And I know the maximum thickness of the sediments they go through, it's like 50 meters. It's uh, nowadays something very, 
very, very big number, of course. And of course, and they collected also the data for connected with sphere of manganese concretions. Luck to, uh, to so-called uh, Norwegian grant. We have a project to, to digitize uh, Gulf of Finland area data sets, and we have nowadays uh, at least ecological map for Gulf of Finland for Estonian areas available in digital format. And uh, among other things, we also uh, focused uh, on the mineral resources of seabed. And if you see, sir, these green areas, this is a distribution areas of the ferromanganese concretions. Of course, we uh, use this old data set and, and we evaluated them for difficult uh, types. Like Jonas said, we have difficult types like this crust, this, uh, this coidal spherical uh, uh, morphology of the uh, concretion. And then we nicely see that, that we have uh, areas we are very, they are distributed very well, and then we have, of course, areas that they have disappeared. Okay, you want to say that ferro manganese concretion at everywhere, but everything depends at which scale we are looking for. Okay, and then we take, took also some samples that are just uh, the pictures of these that we have, these different type of concretion. And now, okay, and we uh, used uh, crabs, just simple crab sample to collect the uh, the, the, uh, the concretion and, and also we use very simple camera. The camera is basically used for the diver. It's like a head camera of the diver that we don't have any, any ROV complex or some good camera. But at least we catch some, some pics that, that are just some, some sample. I have one video clip here. If somebody can start it, I will be happy. Is it possible? Yeah. Ah, okay, it's already running. Okay. Yeah, the, uh, you clearly see it. We have this crust type of uh, concretion, sir, and we see it. We have like a snow between the crust. It's uh, not, of course, snow, but this is a bacteria. It's a bacteria which is very common. It shows that we have an anoxic condition. And if you're touching, we see it all these bacteria might be fly. And it's very very good signals that, that, that we have a, what kind of uh, condition, chemical condition we have, sir. Okay, yeah, but of course we are looking for, for get a better picture, picture in, in, in near soon. Okay, sorry. Okay, and also Ivo Lepland uh, made some injection and also Estonian Universities made some, some laboratory measurements with this concrete, and, and we have some result also. But I don't go with numbers, I focus on the distribution of this type of features. Okay, and if you now looking at what kind of a geology we have at our ferro manganese, as you remember, it's uh, the main areas where say, uh, this is an uh, area. But if you're looking at the map, at this uh, red area, this is a uh, Paleozoic, our crystalline basement, and this is a uh, purple of, of what, what color is this? The, okay, say purple. Yeah, the, then we see this is a Vendian, this is a sandstone. And now, if you see the cross section of this area, we see it that. The area is located somewhere here, and we see the, the yellowish layers in. This is the, the current sandstone, it's very soft sediments. And uh, if you're looking at the composition of the, for example, the groundwater of the current sediments, we see that uh, we have lots of methane inside the groundwater. It's a big number. The black dots here showing that we have uh, uh, Cambrian, Cambrian aquifer groundwater, the number of metal is much less. And then we believe that maybe this concretion is connected with this methane which is coming from this Ediacara layer. Okay. And if you now, it's 
data is collected by uh, Estonian Transportation Administration, is a multi beam data, and we are looking at the same area, the seabed. If we clearly see it, we have some features here, and we are believe that this is like bookmarks, we call it. it this is a, maybe the key issue why the methane is, is uh, chipping to the seafloor, because if you're looking for a sample, uh, our area here, Vimsi Peninsula, we we recognize some, some features on the, on the seismic profile where we believe that this is connected with uh, groundwater sheep and some sea baits. And we believe that we, may, we have the same situation in the eastern part of Gulf of Finland. And this is an example from northwestern of Estonia, offshore area, that we also have uh, see that if we have this bookmark types here, then we have some seepage from, from seepage. Okay, and now if you look into the quaternary map at what kind of uh, sediments we have on this area, uh, then we see that this uh, blue areas, like Jonas said, this is uh, this uh, Baltic ice lake acoustrial sediments, where we, this, so, the age of these sediments is no, approximately 10,000. It means we don't have sedimentation here for the last time. Yeah, exactly. If you put the two layers together, this uh, ferromanganese concretion uh, distribution layer and quaternary sediments, we clearly see it. These, these uh, areas are connected with this blue core. It means these varve clays. And it's same almost with this uh, bottom sediments. It's, it's a common that uh, we don't have clear water clay, but we have discovered by some uh, coarse sediments that we have some sandy gravel, uh, uh, gravel layer on the top of water clays. And there I will also see that, that, that this is connected with this uppermost uh, sandy layer. Because you know, it's a com why we call it concretion. It's, it's means they are growing, growing around some, some piece of rock or some, something. And if you have some small gravel piece, and we have sometimes uh, the ferromanganese concretion growing like maybe maximum 30 centimeters, that it's quite big. Okay. And some, uh, according to this, uh, our, our this sampling set, there are some, some also some. Uh, works done by, by universities, but I don't go to chemistry. <laughs> and we also have some project ongoing in Gulf of Riga. We have just uh, uh, collected two samples from this area. That it's, of course, too, too small number of the samples that I don't therefore to say there anything about the Gulf of Riga, maybe in future. Okay, but, but anyway, that if you took some, some uh, crab samples, we see it. We also collected some from ferromanganese concretion from there. Okay, and then we have now on table plan, we have a plan to go to investigate in this summer also, because this is like joint innovative with uh, different institute from Sweden, from Finland, from Estonia, and we hope that we can use uh, Stockholm University's research vessel, Electra, to investigate in this autumn, and we will see it, maybe. Then we will get much more information about this. Okay, and thank you very much. All right, thank you. <coughs> I'll again start with the questions myself. So, kind of out of the left field, I live on, on the sea or next to the sea, and I just uh, sunk a new water well, and it bubbles. Could that be methane? Yeah, I, I, I haven't tried to light it yet, but the... Uh, yeah, the bubble and it mostly is connected with gas, with, for example, this methane. It is a common, especially if you have a very high sedimentation rate, since... Uh, since uh, yeah, the matter, organic matter, recovered by sediments, for example, and then so a I long probably, time will I probably bubbling. can't bottle it yes, and yeah. sell it. Then, yes. you know. yeah, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right, good. Any questions from uh, the room here? Let me check the Slido as well.
Thank you, Stan. Very, very interesting presentation. Is this is okay? So very good. Uh, yeah, uh, you mentioned submarine groundwater, which is also very interesting. Uh, so, you, you, would you expect that there's a connection between submarine groundwater discharge and, and then these ferromanganese concretions? Uh, what could, uh, I don't heard. Please repeat. Carbon. Uh, uh, this submarine groundwater discharge. Oh, okay. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. Is it then? then uh, is there a connection between ferromanganese concretions and then? The, yes, uh, because as I showed this picture uh, where we have analyzed the, the groundwater, it there are lots of the methane in increased. And we, we believe it's the, the origin of methane, which is very important, a very important role for formation of a ferromagnetic concretion. This is a source. This is a, we are just expecting because we don't have any experience in Estonia to, to investigate the, the groundwater to see sea flow. Also in Wiems area, we just see it on the uh, profiles, seismic profiles, but we don't see any, any in situ method data here. We hope that in future, in this summer, or we, we, it's what we want to know, of course. Because I know in, in Finland you have some experience with this already. Okay. Oh, you're welcome to come take a water sample at my place if you want. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I will remember it at that good point. Uh, okay, well, uh, I'd, I'd like to bit continue with this topic, actually. There are, I have another question, but if we still have time. But um, the, the thing is, like, um, if, if we hypothesize that, okay, this uh, manganese has a groundwater origin, uh, so it's like the groundwater... Methane is... Methane. Methane. methane yeah. not, not the manganese. No, no. Manganese is no, 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 no. But, that, okay, but anyway, uh, yeah, the point is like, uh, uh, those are the ward clay, uh, the areas where the ward clay is distributed. So how how thick is uh, the world clay pile? Uh, well, it depends, of course. That uh, you see uh, here is this cross section. That, that, that mm. we have uh, bedrocks and we have uh, till. It's common oh, okay. coverings as a bedrock, and then we have uh, water clay. Water clay is it's sometimes it's common. That it's we have in Gulf of Finland area like uh, 20 meters maybe. Okay. It's a very very thin layer of. Yeah, but well. Uh, but we don't, don't you see a problem here? Well, the 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 gas is seeping through the kind of homogeneous world clay, and you have the clay till below. Yeah. But anyway, but well, I mean, uh, I know the I know the problem there, and uh, and this uh, kind of. Uh, Sir, we have a crystalline basement outcropping areas. Mm. We don't have any 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 water clay or, or, or any sediments here. It means the water clay sometimes is very very thin. Okay. And of course, that we, of course, this area we see it probably is a more thinner layer of uh, water clays. But we have areas because it's important what we are exactly on the border of Baltic Shield and uh, East European platform. <laughs> and we believe, yeah, that we have uh, Ejakaran outcrops here and mm -hmm. basement here, and then we have uh, these seepage areas. Okay. Who knows? We will, yeah, yeah. because yeah. we don't have, have any yeah. any data. Method in situ. Yeah. The okay, well, there is a, yeah. No, there is a way to 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 see the methane origin actually to do some analysis on that. Yes. I'd, I'd, I'd yeah. like to just just to ask. Uh, okay. Well, I know that this work is still ongoing. Uh, any any idea if those bacterial mats uh, that those are sulfur bacteria? Uh, yeah, because I am not very very to feel very strong okay. in in this matter, but. Topic, but I know I will plan for Norwegian yeah. uh, Geological Institute also involved in uh, Estonian Geological Survey. He now pushing it to 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 get some some specialist to this group yeah, okay. that was, who can dealing with this bacteria and things and, and this is of course yeah. important to involve microbiologist yeah, that, into that's really interesting. marine yeah, geologist yeah. group of course. Uh, there are some indications actually telling that this whole thing might be bacteria microbially. Sorry. Yes. Yes. So, okay. Yeah. Interesting. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions from the from the room? I'm checking the slide. Or 
and nothing from online. So if there's no other questions, then thank you very much, Sten. Thank you.